Hi, my name is Lara and welcome to my channel, Inner Goddess Guidance. Um, I created this channel for anyone who is on a path to self-healing and self-mastery. And I imagine that most of the people here are women on the Divine Feminine Twin Flame path. If this is a part of my mission and I'm so excited because I was um, given the inspiration that we should create our own oracle deck and so this is the first video if you are interested in following along on Facebook I have a closed Facebook group I have the link for that in the description box and you just need to ask to join and I will confirm you there's about 20 people in the group so far and really good discussion going on and I will daily post a few options for our next topic and then you can vote on it and tell me which one you're most interested in um, doing next. So last night's vote for the people who voted um, said that they wanted to do surrender and so that is the topic that I did some research on and, and we all did kind of some research on it and I got some really wonderful um, resources from the other people in the group as well. So it was just fabulous and that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted the opportunity for us to really share and pool resources and help each other understand more deeply every topic so that we can when we're creating our own cards we can really um, come to it with a greater understanding and a greater um, insight awareness um, so it's really been fun and I'm even more excited than I was before so the topic today is surrender and my suggestion is that in your journal right now you just write the word surrender and then um, I'm going to be asking some questions you can always go back through the video you could pause the video after each question I ask and let yourself sort of brainstorm your own answer in your journal as we go you could play it back later um, you can listen to the whole thing and do you know whatever comes to mind afterwards so I think what's most important is to ask yourself when you start what's your starting point what's your starting understanding of surrender and and so here's some questions to consider right now in terms of what you already consider surrender to be in your life so when you think about the word or the concept surrender what do you think about what comes to mind what images do you connect with surrender what does surrender mean to you? What would a person, what would you surrender? Brainstorm some things that you or, or a person might surrender. Remember that we can surrender something and we can surrender to something. So I was thinking about that and of course one of the things that came to mind was this wonderful deck by um, Judith Orloff, The Power of Surrender Cards. And there are how many cards in this deck? 52 cards. So when she was creating this Power of Surrender, she made 52 cards <laughs> that could go with it. So here's just a few. There's Surrender Procrastination. That would be a good one to surrender. Surrender to your full power. Surrender resentments. Surrender worry. So you can see, oh, here's another good one actually. Surrender to your intuition. So when I was um, considering this and doing the research, it became very clear to me that there's the, the, the thing we are surrendering and then the force we are surrendering to. 
So on the battlefield, which is the way that we often think of surrender, um, a person surrenders to a foe or an enemy in defeat. That can happen also in, in, a, um, in a match for a sport. For example, you could surrender, well, you could or forfeit, you know, you could give up, essentially. Um, and, and usually that's in recognition to defeat, to being defeated. So I'm giving up because I ha I'm surrendering to the superiority of the other person, the foe, right? And then, of course, there's surrendering to a higher power. A higher power we don't usually consider to be a foe. Um, a surrendering to a higher power is sort of giving up and giving over a kind of control, a need to control, a need to change what is happening in the moment or in our lives. It's kind of saying, I've done all I can do, and now I give it to you, um, spirit, universe, divine, angels, God. So, um, and that reminded me of, in AA, um, Alcoholics Anonymous, the first step is about surrendering to a higher power, saying, I can't, I don't have control over my life and I'm out of control, I'm, I'm surrendering to a higher power. And that's the essential first step in AA. So it's about giving something up and giving over the need to or the battle for control. It's about giving over the need to or the battle for control. And then I asked myself an important question that I want to delve more deeply into for myself. And that is the question of surrendering. If I'm surrendering, am I surrendering free will? Um, and that reminded me of this journey. So I want to tie it back. They, I've heard Aluna Ash talk many times about the free will versus the twin flame experiments. And, um, you know, I don't know about all of that. I don't have the same kind of insight she has, but I get it. The idea is either you believe that there is a, a sort of map of your destiny that you are, you come into this lifetime with or choosing your own actions to control your own destiny, if you will. And I think, you know, most of the time we're doing both all the time. <clears throat> and you could go so far as to say, well, you know, a person who believes in destiny um, and that there's some sort of map of your destiny, whether that's written in the stars as in a horoscope, or whether you believe in a past life and therefore you come with a karmic, um, a karmic debts that you need to face and that life will present you with those challenges and you need to sort of figure them out, wipe the slate clean before your soul can ascend. Um, the idea that, that something is already written or planned for us and has been since the beginning, I think in some cases feels very, um, it, it feels comforting because then there's a lot that we can sort of let go of in terms of comparing ourselves to other people or having to um, take a path that we're told to take we can say no i have a, i have a destined path and i'm going to follow sort of what my my inner calling is drawing me toward and um yeah so I, I i have to explore that some more too for myself this idea of free will versus you know this idea of a destiny being being determined by my soul a contract that i entered into that I've consciously no longer 
connected to, but that we can connect to it. I mean, because people who believe that believe in things like the Akashic Records. Um, you know, I had this amazing uh, astrological chart done for me, and I was absolutely blown away by by the things that the man um, who did it was was sharing with me, and so accurate for me, and it felt really supportive to hear him describe things that were happening in my life, things that are my struggles and that I'm facing, and and you know just validating things for me that that I had always thought were you know a problem with me or something and 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 it's sort of like it was cool that him without even knowing me he could like look at my chart and say it's it's written there it's written but he did also mention that you know this is he said this is when you look at the map of the stars this is what you're given when you board the train basically and then you how your life goes is dependent upon a lot of free will choices so that's what it reminded me of this power of surrender what am i surrendering to so in a way i feel like i've surrendered to this path to this calling i am when i get a message from spirit i'm surrendering to the belief that that is a message for me that i am um, guided to deliver that that is my purpose um, I could choose to ignore it and and that would be free will but instead I sort of like the idea personally that that this is destined and that I have accepted the destiny I've embraced it which is kind of embracing the surrendering to it it's it's kind of cool um, so I wrote down surrendering to what force are you surrendering feelings and emotions or surrendering to feelings and emotions to our soul's calling to our heart knowing to our deepest desires to this journey to a defined outcome so what are we surrendering to who are we surrendering to you can surrender um, to a foe or to defeat or to um, a, a, a job or a, a, a responsibility um, to a situation that you don't like um, or even a situation you do like, you can surrender. And then I thought, I wrote down, what are the benefits of surrender? What does it hold, the benefits, for, for me, for you? What keeps a person, like you, me, what keeps me from surrendering? What is the struggle with surrendering? Do I feel like I'm losing, as in thinking of it as surrender on the battlefield, and therefore I don't want to lose, so I'm not going to surrender, because that somehow I will be defeated and therefore lose, be a loser. <laughs> um, so I wrote down, is it a fear of defeat? Is it a fear that I will be defeated if I surrender? A fear of defeat. And then um, there, I wrote, there's of course an aspect to giving up in the battle or the fight or the struggle to the resistance to it, right? So the question then becomes, who and what have we been fighting? Why are we fighting? What are we hoping to gain in victory? If we are victorious, what have we surrendered to that end? So I was thinking about free will. I was thinking about competition. I was thinking about how many times I've been drawn into competitions I really didn't want to be a part of. Um, and I've been thinking why people compete, what are they hoping to gain? And then is there a loss when we choose to do that, when we choose to go into battle and we don't surrender, we win, 
um, because we've managed to control, right? We've managed to maneuver, outmaneuver, whatever. So what is lost or sacrificed in that victory? So those were some interesting thoughts that came to me. I um, wanted to share with you a few things. Um, oh, and by the way, I'm going to link a few articles for you to look at. Um, one was shared in the Facebook group, and I'll put it in the comment section, or I'll pin it in the yeah, I'll pin it in the comment section because I think that's the best place for people to see it. And this one was a really lovely article um, that one of the Facebook users posted. And I wanted to share it for a couple of reasons. First of all, it, it says the beauty of surrender. Let's see if I can make that nice and come on, pop. There we go, the beauty of surrender. But I also liked it for this picture. So this picture is, the whole website is like called Mind Maps, I think. And I love how this picture is drawn. And you can see the words coming out here like a, a web. We used to call that clustering or webbing, spider chart. And um, all the words that are coming off it, which is a great way to do your journal, by the way. Especially if you're not a, set, you know, you're, you want to short, sort of shorthand things. It's a great way to brainstorm. So the, the main words that are coming off of this poll are peace, silence, accept, inner, and stop. And then there are words that come out. So for example, peace says peace, and then from that it says within, without, 100% total. And what I liked about this um, article was this piece in here that I thought was really beautiful because it was talking about the connection between surrendering to the reality of the moment, whatever is happening right now, surrendering to whatever is happening right now. That a lot of times what we're resisting when we're uncomfortable in our feelings is we're resisting the reality of the moment. And that's why we aren't happy or we're dissatisfied is because we want to change it. We want the reality of the moment to change. So one of the things that um, it's said in here is you cannot find happiness because happiness is not an object. Happiness is surrendering to reality 100%. What is reality? Whatever is happening right now. The entry point for peace is reconnecting with the present moment. Change or surrender happens when you get tired of thinking about yourself. Bored of the same stories in your head, such as, poor me, and it shouldn't be happening. Once you direct your attention to what you can offer rather than what you get, your life improves beyond measure. I highly recommend this article. And one thing you might do is read through it with a highlighter. See, this is what I do. I like highlighting. And you'll notice I don't highlight everything. I used to tell my students they liked their highlighters so much they would almost like just to color the whole paper. But you're really looking for those key words, those key phrases or pieces that really jump off the page and grab for your attention. And when you read it, you go, oh my God, that's it. Yes. So look at an article you're reading kind of like a treasure chest filled with gems. You can only take a few in your pocket with you when you leave. What gems are inside of that article? that are the most important things for you. Remember that an article is just another take on something. The most important thing here is that you're deepening your understanding of what surrender means to you. There's not a right answer. The concept of surrender is huge. And when we're talking about concepts, 
we're talking about building our understanding of them. The more we build our understanding of them, the more we can be flexible in the use of that concept. So surrender might be an important thing for you in many situations, not just in one, okay? Um, so that was that article, and gosh, it's beautiful. Really, really, really beautiful. And the whole website is beautiful. Mind map, it's called. And then I wanted to share with you one reader's um, drawing so far that she had done. And I, I printed this out on my printer. It is not very clear. Um, I don't, if you want to join the Facebook group, you're going to see it in there. And I printed it out here in color, but I used her um, pencil drawing because that way you could probably see it better. I felt like the, the other color one was harder to actually see what she had done. But here's an example of what somebody did. And um, let me push this so I can see what it looks like. So you can see there, there's a woman, her arms are outstretched. Her hair is coming down, and it's wrapping around a shell. So I kind of liked the idea of this. Um, I noticed the woman coming out of her shell. Her arms are sort of simultaneously reaching up, and now I see they're sort of bent like this, almost like she's dancing. So maybe like dancing in the moment. But she's also leaning back in this sort of surrender to, again, kind of the moment. That's the image. And her hair kind of comes down and wraps around this um, this shell, like almost like a um, snail shell or something. And then she took her notes and wrote some things down here for her ideas that she was working on as she was drawing that or what came out to her. And some of the things she wrote was, um, let's see if I can understand exactly. Oh, limiting beliefs, so surrendering limiting beliefs. Dark and light, surrender dark and light. To the divine feminine spirit within surrendering to the divine feminine spirit within um and then there are some other things it's harder for me to read off of that so i want to thank her for allowing um, the share of that and like i said if you go into the facebook group you are going to find um, far more discussion that will deepen your understanding all you have to do is ask and i'll let you in and um it's just turning out really beautifully. So join us over there if you can or you want to. And um, that was basically the talk about surrender today. Your job then in creating your card is to figure out what your definition of that is. Because an oracle, what I think is the oracle has to work for you. So when you see surrender come up, you won't have to ask, what does this mean? You'll automatically have the attachment of the meaning to that card, won't you? So that's what's fabulous about making your own oracle. Okay, and oh, it would be also could be dependent on whatever is laying next to it, you know, because that's how cards work sometimes. It's not just the card on its own. It's the card in relationship to what's next to it. So if, for example, um, fear was the card next to it, then you might say, oh, this is a message to surrender fear. What am I afraid of right now in my life? Is there something that I'm fearing and can I surrender that? Um, so that's an example. So let's call in spirit and draw a goddess oracle. Dear spirit of the universe of love and light, please be with us in this time and place. As we focus our collective intention on gaining wisdom and guidance for our journey toward healing and self-mastery. We ask for open hearts and minds to receive the messages that will serve our highest and best good in the service of love, healthy love in all forms. With deep gratitude, thank you.
So Spirit didn't um, let me pick a card out of this one uh, earlier this morning when I had to wake up and give a message. <laughs> Sorry, it's going to shake the camera. It's pretty funny to watch that video, for me anyway. So I had to surrender actually this morning. I had to surrender to the message Spirit was giving me and that I needed to deliver it right away. And then the most beautiful thing is that um, once I was done, I went back to bed and I was rewarded with the most beautiful dream. So when we do surrender to the messages we're given, to our calling, to what we're being prompted to do, even when it's scary and uncomfortable, um, you know, good things can come. And I had a lovely dream. So dreams are awesome. So the Goddess Oracle um, deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky and Verona Donto. I'm going to try this one again. Dear Spirit, please give us one goddess energy that can guide us today, perhaps with the idea of surrender, can deepen our understanding, or just an adjunct message. Surrender. Okay, that's what happened this morning. Since nothing's coming out, I'm actually going to change decks, if you don't mind. This morning, the same thing was happening, which was just no cards were coming out. So I felt like Spirit was saying, nope, we don't want you to use that deck for a while. So I'm going to change to the Divine Feminine Oracle Guidebook. And that's by Megan Watterson. So Spirit, let's try this deck. Can you give us one? Divine Feminine Energy that's working with us today. Oh, I think it's this one. Um, Mio, Miao Shan, the Princess of Mercy. Giving is receiving. The energy of the universe is merciful. I think we've had that one before. Or I did that actually maybe on the live poll that I had. So Miao Shan, the Princess of Mercy, she's got a um, peach in her hand and a white tiger next to her. She's so beautiful. Miao Shan. I wish this was in alphabetical order. It would make it so much easier for my eyes to find the, the beautiful energy. Oh my goodness. There she is, 108. So listen to see if you find any connections to the concept of surrender or any of the things we've already talked about. Miyoshan represents the incarnation and fulfillment of mercy. She was a Chinese princess who believe, is believed to have lived during the Tang Dynasty and to have been the incarnation of the goddess Quan Yin. She was the daughter of a king who wanted her to marry a wealthy man in order to secure more wealth and power for himself. When she refused, the king sent her to live in, the, in a monastery on a secluded island off the coast of China. When the king found out that Miyoshan had transformed the barren island into a paradise, he got so angry that he ordered the monastery to be burned to the ground. But when Mia Shan saw the monastery in flames, she pricked the tip of her tongue with a hairpin and magically summoned a storm that put out the fire. The king then ordered Mia Shan's execution, but no blade or sword could kill her. Instead, each weapon shattered into pieces before touching her body. 
After several attempts, a gorgeous glowing white tiger appeared and spirited Miyashan away. The tiger took her to meet Yama, the ruler of hell. Miyashan immediately heard the suffering of the souls all around her and one by one she liberated them with the fierce power of her empathy. Yama had to send Miyashan away because she was transforming hell into heaven. He gave her the peach of longevity as a gift. Miyashan meditated for many years on the island of Putushan. News reached her that the king was on the verge of death and that he needed the eyes and arms of a person without anger in order to live. Miyashan gave him her eyes and arms. The king was revived and came to honor the person who had saved his life. When he saw that his savior was Miyashan, he fell to his knees, humbled by the extent of her mercy. When your soul selects her card, the author Su Monk Kidd articulates the process of empathy so clearly when she writes, empathy is the most mysterious transaction that the human soul can have, and it's accessible to all of us. But we have to give ourselves the, uh, to the opportunity to identify, to plunge ourselves into a story where we see the world from the bottom up or through another's eyes or heart. Empathy is mercy's twin sister. When we can feel into the reality of someone else's suffering, we open up to the possibility of mercy. Mercy comes from the old Etruscan, Etruscan um, merk, which means exchange. Mercy is the embodiment of compassion. It can feel easy or even natural to have compassion for people who have never harmed us personally. That's true. They've never harmed you. It's easy to feel for them, right? But mercy is having compassion for someone who has. Mercy requires that we give something of ourselves, which is symbolized by Miyoshan giving her eyes and arms to the king. It can feel like a great sacrifice to be so giving towards someone who has given us nothing but suffering. Here's where the magic comes in. The law of the universe is merciful. The more we give, the more we receive. When the king realized the profound act of mercy his daughter bestowed on him, Miyoshan transformed into a true manifestation as a thousand armed Quan Yin, as the thousand armed Quan Yin. Miyoshan is a reminder that giving is the true receiving. When we refuse to release our anger towards someone, we're blocking the flow of the universe within us. We are not harming the person who harmed us by remaining angry. We are keeping ourselves from receiving the love and light that is already ours. So a soul voice meditation, who can I give mercy to in this moment? And your intention, giving is receiving. The energy of the universe is merciful. So to connect that to the idea of surrender, one idea that comes to mind right now is that surrendering the need to hold on to grudges. You're surrendering grudges and you're extending mercy. And by doing that, you are opening yourself back up. Somewhere in the last 24 hours, I think I, I heard that when I, I think it was on one of the articles of surrender, actually. 
that when we clear things from our past like that, right, we, we can clear away grudges we hold or, you know, we can extend mercy even when, even when it's not only hard to do, but it feels that you would be justified somehow to hold on. But when we truly allow, surrender that, we make space for abundance to flow in. So somewhere I was reading about getting rid of stuff and purging certain energy out of us makes this beautiful space. And I think it's said for love to flow in. And that's really what you're doing when you're transmuting a grudge into mercy, right? when you're surrendering that need to be right or righteous, you're opening up to love. And it doesn't mean to come from the person that you're giving mercy to. It comes from the universe flowing back into you because giving opens yourself up to receive. So I like that, surrendering in a sense. Thank you, Mishan and, and Spirit for reminding us of that. And I think that I definitely could do with surrendering um, my righteousness, surrendering my need to, um, to want. I think that I have a great desire and need and struggle for justice when I think things are not fair. And that is something that maybe I need to surrender, the need to um, seek or want. And that doesn't mean that we don't, I mean, I'm not talking in a political sense and un, that you don't work for justice. I'm just saying, you know, like on an energetic sense, giving up the need for, you know, maybe that makes space for it to flow in, actually. Trying to control it and believing, surrendering that over to the universe and saying, I believe that justice will be had someday. Or I, I surrender the need to even think about that because it's robbing me in this moment for me to feel like things are inequitable or unfair. That's a thought anyway. It's just a thought. So let's get one message from the Power of Surrender deck. And I thought maybe later today, I don't know, I'm having trouble with my internet connection, by the way. I have to get a whole new modem. Mine's really old, but um, they're not coming until Thursday. And I keep unplugging and plugging, and I called them, and I thought, I'll just go buy a new one. Nope, because I have an old technology. So it's really, I don't have a stable internet. So we'll see how this gets uploaded, if it gets uploaded. Okay, so Spirit, please give us one Power of Surrender card. What should we think about? To add to, deepen our understanding of surrender, please. Oh, those want to come out, but that's three. I'm going to pop them back in. All right. Ah, oh, this is a great one. It's kind of sexy card too. It says, surrender to effortlessness. It reminds me a little bit of the um, image of the woman leaning back with her hair and the card that was made by one of the viewers. It says, stop pushing so hard. The art of living means going with the flow instead of trying to force the river. Definitely, 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 definitely. I was, I, I, my whole journey when it started was a kind of surrender. 
I came across some things the other day that reminded me of what I had experienced and, and the insights that I'd gained. And I remember thinking it's only when we're resisting the river. Like if you're caught in the rapids, if you imagine yourself as caught in rapids or in a river's current, if you start to try to swim against it, that's where the struggle is. And it really exhausts you to swim against the current. So that's kind of connected back to that whole surrender to the reality of the moment. What is happening right now? The current of the river is going this way and you don't like it. So you start struggling against it to fighting, 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 fighting it and you're trying to swim um, against the natural flow instead of understanding that you're resilient, you're buoyant, and if you let go, the river has you, it'll carry you. But we're so afraid of drowning, right? We're, we're resistant to it. So the opposite of surrender is resistance. It's control. So surrender, I love that. Surrender to effortlessness. So a good, um, a good affirmation is I surrender the need to hold on to grudges or I surrender to mercy, to the power of mercy. I surrender effortlessly. <laughs> I like that one. I surrender effortlessly. I surrender to the moment. I go with the flow. Okay, that's it. Thanks. I, I can't wait to see cards. I'm so excited to start my own and make my own too. So thank you for stopping by today. And you know, it's perfectly okay to watch these and not make the cards at all. Hopefully you still get to deepen your understanding. Don't forget at the end of the day when you go back to your journal, very last thing, come up with a gratitude, something you're genuinely grateful for in your day. I think the most beautiful thing is to understand what we really truly do control. So much we don't, but our thoughts, we're totally in control of that. Don't let them control you. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Oops, stop. <laughs>